back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Janie and I am an OBGYN resident who likes to talk on the internet and write on the internet about all things about living in medicine. In today's video, we are going to be doing my February budget recap as well as setting up my budget for the month of March. Before we get started, I just wanna say that there have been a lot of changes that I made in the month of February. I made a lot of money moves and I changed a lot of things around. So there's a few things that are a little bit different and I'll kind of go over all of them as we go through the video. So some of those updates is that I started a challenge. I started a challenge for saving money from this community called We All Grow Latinas. It's basically about Hispanic women who are bloggers or influencers or business owners who connect on the internet and they have this savings plan for, for saving $5,000 in a year. So what I've been doing is in addition to what I am saving monthly, if I have a week where I spent no money at all, then I'll make a transfer into my sinking funds as part of extra savings to kind of participate in that savings challenge, plus also saving more money, plus incentivizing myself to not spend money without thinking about it first. Another thing is that I forgot that on the month of February, towards the end, we get our Amex renewal fee. So we are members of the American Express Delta Reserve card. So that has an annual fee that my husband pays because he's the primary and then I have a card as well. So for that one I pay a reduced fee of $175 and I completely spaced out and forgot that that was due in the month of February slash March. Now the other thing is that I opened an M1 Finance account. So M1 Finance is an online platform where you can invest your money. You also can have a bank account with them and you can also borrow or get a loan from them. During the month of February, they had a promotion going that if you joined the platform and deposited $100, then you would get $30 for free. In addition to that, they had a promotion going on that ended on February 28th that you could get their M1 Plus account which is their savings account for free for a whole year. This usually has a fee of $125. The reason I found all of these things is because of personal finance with Layla or Living Like Layla, I believe is her channel name. So she has two channels and I discovered her on her personal finance channel. I love her. Her voice is so soothing and she has been a really good inspiration for me this year. I found her account in January. So literally it has been in 2021, but Basically, it's all about the money mindset and kind of focusing on your goals and kind of shifting the way that you view things so that you can achieve those goals. So that's something that I'm really trying to do this year and surround myself with people that are in the same journey as I am. So I used her link to get $30. So I deposited $100 and basically for now, I'm not going to focus on that account. I'll focus on that account a little bit later on because I still want to try and max out my Roth IRA. Once I'm able to max out my Roth IRA, then I'll move on to maybe putting a little bit of extra money in that account if possible. But I also need to save for my student loans so I can pay for that pay as much as possible during the forbearance period and try to pay off those two loans that I've been talking about for the past few months. I also want to continue saving. I think that's pretty much it. So I do have a referral link for M1 Finance. So if that's something that you are interested in learning more, a little bit more about investing, it's a really easy platform. I think I'm going to make another video in the future talking a little bit about it and my two different investing accounts, my Roth IRA and my M1 Finance account. So if you want to get $10 to $30, I think the promotion is still on for $30, but I think the rest of the year they normally have it at $10. But if you are interested in getting $10 to $30 for free just by depositing $100 in your M1 Finance account, I will leave a referral link down in the description box down below. But moving on, the other update is that I moved my emergency fund. So I used to have my emergency fund in my local bank account or credit union, and I moved it to my Discover account because 
I want that account to have a little bit more of APY, so yearly interest that it accumulates. So Discover accounts are high yield savings accounts, so I moved my emergency fund there and then I think I sort of had mentioned that before and then I kept my credit union account for my sinking funds. If you want more free money, Discover is, I am a member of Discover since 2017. I started with their credit card and I now have three bank accounts with them as well as their credit card and I love them. I swear by their customer service. If you are interested in joining Discover, please consider using my link down below. You get $50 when you open a bank account with Discover, whether it is their credit card or a bank account. In the credit card, you get $50 cash back. And I think if you open a checking account, it's also $50 cash back. So who doesn't love free money? I love free money, so I try to take advantage of as much as these little freebies as I can. So I will leave both those links down in the description box if you wanna support me, help me in my financial journey, please. I would highly, highly appreciate it if you do end up signing up you can send me a little dm or you can leave a comment down below and i will be sure to shout you out in my next monthly video and then the other thing that i did is i moved some of my like recurring expenses like my spotify my canva as well as my medication costs and my gas to be spent from my credit card just so that i can get get some cash back on those especially since i have a discover credit card they do have a lot of extra cash back months so they have a five percent cash back for like three month periods throughout the year in different things so like grocery stores pharmacies gas stations different topics every couple months so if you purchase in those situations you get five percent cash back instead of the usual one percent so moved all of those expenses to be automatically into that account so my credit card usage might go up a little bit in the next few months because of that but i am taking that out of the budget and putting it into that credit card budget moving on into the february budget overview so one of the things that i wanted to talk about is I did overspend a little bit in my Discover because I, if you remember, I think it was either in my financial goals, my January or February budget videos that I mentioned that Canva now has the option to have annual billing and it saves you money. So I decided to pay for the annual subscription of Canva. So I used my credit card to get that cash back. So I did overspend a little bit on that. But because of the challenge that I joined, I was able to save an extra $60 to my sinking funds. I also did very, very good in personal spending. Basically, I spent probably around $20. The rest of my sp expenses in this personal spending category was that my cousin was having her baby shower and I always get super excited about those things. So I decided to splurge that little baby with a bunch of love and I sent her some few nice gifts. That is basically some of the disclosures for the month of February. So going into the numbers, and so now I have my computer here and I'll be looking at all the numbers. So from my salary, I got $3,843.26 and the rollover balance from the month before was $463.12. That makes the total balance in the account at the beginning of the month was $4,306.38. So as of the end of the month, so I created the images in February 27th, in my savings account I had $7,546.70. In my emergency fund there was $2,800. In the down payment account was $7,448.01. And in my sinking funds was $120.41. So for rent in the month of February, we paid $912.06, $422.93 for my car loan, $700 to my student loans, zero on gas, $5 on health, which was for medications, $118 from my Discover expenses from the month of January, my Amex, which was $175, 152 with three cents in my apple card which is a little bit more than i wanted to spend some of the times that i ate out i used my 
Apple Card because if you use Apple Pay, they do give you 2% cash back. Um, if you use the card, then it's 1% cash back. So I rather would use a card that gives me cash back for my purchases rather than using something else. So I use that. Zero for Spotify and Canva, which are included in the Discover card expenses. 100 for PayPal. 400 into my Roth IRA and a total of $860 into my savings. Now in gifts, like I said, $53.04 and then $16.10. No miscellaneous. And then my total expenses was $3,914.53. So after the IRA deposit with the total expenses, which was you basically subtract the $400 that get directly deposited into my Roth IRA. The final balance was $391.81. So the goals of the month that I did achieve was I did set up a sinking fund direct deposit of $100. I created a student loan payment plan projection and I also got all of our tax documents ready. Because we have to pay taxes, we decided to defer doing the early filing and then we're going to file our taxes basically in April at the last day so that we have more time to compile everything that we need to pay for our taxes. And then because the leftover balance is the same, so it's $391.53. My accounts, I have the checking account, I have three savings accounts, my Roth IRA, and then my new account, which is the M1 finance account. Moving on to the March budget. In the month of March, the, I expected to only pay like $50 for the Amex card, which was the expenses on that card from a date night. But since it does have the renewal fee, I need to pay that. So the budget for the Amex card is higher because of that. And then I do have the expectation that I'll probably overspend a little bit and go over budget. I'm hoping not to, I'm gonna try not to but I am going to Dallas for two weeks for work and they will reimburse me for a lot of the expenses, but I might have to use my money in the meantime before I get reimbursed. So I do have that expectation and will plan accordingly as needed. So for the month of March, I expect $3,844.38. I don't expect any side income. I still have to buy the prologues, so I'm hopeful hoping to do that this month because I don't have any other big goals. For rent, $910. I know it's going to be less than that. It's going to be like $903. Car loan, $422.93. 700 to student loans. And this is not, this is another change that I made. So since I was able to get the M1 Finance Plus account for free for a whole year, and it does have 1% interest then I will be depositing the student loan payments into that account so it accumulates a little bit of interest and then when I have the whole lump sum to pay off the $3,000 loan, I'll pay that and then I'll continue saving up that money and then pay the rest that I accumulate in September before the deferment period ends. So that's my plan for now. It's kind of copying what Layla from Personal Finance with Layla is doing. I will link her channel down below. Her story is very inspiring and I truly love her. So she's been a good inspiration for me, I believe. For Discover Card, $211.51. And like I said, I put the Canva and the Spotify expenses on there. $200 for the Amex, which includes a date night and the renewal fee. $85 for the Apple Card, no Spotify, no Canva, $50 for PayPal because I don't have any actual payment plan that is due, so I have a little bit of a wiggle room, and since I had those unexpected expenses from the Amex, I'm just gonna lower the payment on PayPal credit a little bit. Then 400 to the Roth IRA, 800 in savings, $50 for personal, $50 for eating out, and then that leaves me with $350.39 for unexpected expenses. Basically, for this month, one of the things that I wanna do is I want to try to limit my spending even more, try to keep it as minimum as possible, especially since we'll be going to Dallas. 
and then hoping to get some payouts because I did send a big bag to thread up and most of the things already sold so I just need those to be approved so I can get my payout hopefully that'll be an extra $40 that can go into some of my savings accounts I haven't decided which one anyway so that's pretty much it for the budget I did have another thing that I wanted to talk about and I kind of wanted to dip into positive reward or positive reinforcement and that is to acknowledge my financial wins. So I did create a full loan repayment plan where I see like the payments that I'm gonna be making once interests come back and what the balances are. So since I got the M1 Finance promotion for their M1 Plus account, I'm going to be using their 1% APY account like a high yield savings account for racking up interest on those payments that I would be making to my student loans throughout the rest of the deferment period. The other thing that I want to celebrate is I had a very good month in terms of personal spending overall in the month of February so I hope to do that again in the month of March. That is it for like the budget section. I just want to say thank you so much for supporting my channel. I have a bunch of new followers so welcome to all of you. I hope you continue following my journey. If you want to support me, please consider checking out all the links down below. I do have my personal finance workbook, which I created. It took lots and lots of hours to create that, but it's basically a self guide to organize all of your finances so that you can start taking control and learning a little bit more about your finances. It has a bunch of resources. It has templates and all of that for savings for paying off your, your loans and for investing as well. If you're interested in checking out M1 Finance, I really recommend checking it out using the link down below. It'll give me 10 or $30 depending on when you sign up. If you deposit $100 into your account, um, one of the things that I have really liked about them is their interface is very user friendly. And in addition to that, they also have a bunch of options in terms of what you can invest in. So one of the things that it works on is you create a pie and that's basically what you want to invest your money in. And one of the options that they do have is they have eco-conscious pies. So you can basically look into those if you want to support specific causes, if that's something that you're passionate about. It's definitely something that I've been looking into and I may do in the future, but for now I'm just investing in normal market stuff so more like long-term ETFs and index funds that kind of mimic the S&P 500. If you need a new bank account or a new credit card please consider Discover. I love them. Their customer service is excellent. I really cannot say enough good things about them. I have referred a lot of friends and family members to Discover and they have not regretted it one bit. So if you want to open a Discover account also check the link in the description box. Now, I have been rambling for a long time, so that is it for this video, you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the like button to let me know that you enjoy these kinds of videos. It really helps my channel a lot. And I will see you all in my next video.